Jamo with the banger. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? How we doing today? Pretty great, pretty great, big dog. Doing good, doing good. What's up, man? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, yes, as yes, always. Sir. Almost man. almost the end of the week, almost the end of the week. Almost the mm-hmm. end of the week. Weekend's coming up. Anyone got any big plans? Anything popping? What's up? Man, you know what I mean? Nothing really too crazy. Uh, I think for the most part, uh, on Friday, I'm going to be dropping, like, you know what I mean, some more visuals. I'm going to put all, you know what I mean, some mm-hmm. more visuals for my... Uh, Last song, well, my last little project that I have. Yes, sir. It's the name of the song. So, yeah. We're going yes, to sir. <laughs> I love it. I love it, bro. So, for everybody out there, this is uh, Willie Gates, my boy, Will. Uh, yes, sir. Willie Gates. Shout out to you coming on, on the show today. Yeah, there you go. Follow him on the IG. Uh, listen to his music. I'm sure it's on every streaming platform. Uh, Apple Music, Spotify. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, yes, you know, show the love and support. You're going to get to learn a little bit more about him today uh straight out of la just like me um yeah bro tell us a little bit about yourself what's up what you got going on well man like my boy p said uh name is willie gates uh straight out of west la you know what i mean born and raised uh been making music now since i was about 16 you know what i mean so it started in back in you know what, what is that like 2014 i want to say maybe you know what i mean just started getting a feel yeah. for the music um then started taking it a little bit more serious, seriously as I got older, you know what I mean? Actually building projects together and getting a mixing and mastering done and figuring out, you know what I mean? The whole aspect of what goes behind just, you know what I mean? Making music, you know what I mean? It's not just, like you can just go in there and just make something happen, you know what I mean? It's a lot of shit that actually goes into it, you know what I mean? I'm starting to learn about and getting more into and shit, so yeah. For sure, bro. So who do, who inspired you to make music? When, when did you say, oh, shit, this is what I want to do. This is something that I really like to do. I'm good at it. When did you kind of realize that or like have the interest of doing it? Yeah, man. I mean, I can go back to like, you know, what I mean, the old 50 cent days, you know, what I mean, just being a young <laughs> nigga watching, you know, what I mean, the young videos and shit. Yeah. Go walking around with the headband on, you know, what I mean, I used to inspire to be like that. I used to go in the mirror and put my fucking headband on and just, you know, what I mean, kind of create those moments. <laughs> I was always in my own music video in my own head, pretty much. So yeah, you know, That's 50s awesome. was like one of my biggest, like, you know what I mean? Started into making, wanting to make music and shit like that. And then uh, probably say, you know, as I started getting older and like getting in like middle school and high school area, you know what I mean? I started really vibing with Wiz. Wiz was a big inspiration mm-hmm. for me. Uh, I just feel like- It was the was first, first rap concert I ever went to. Was yeah, Wiz. That's funny, yeah. same thing here. First concert really? I ever Yeah, yeah, I saw awesome. Wiz. It was a smokers club concert actually with one of my boys. Um, and then he goes by, he goes by, his name, his name is August, my bad. I was going to call him his actual name. Call him but, July. Um, he stayed yeah. and he by August. July. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's also a musician too, but y'all um, people are always black. And yeah, I mean, Wiz came out and uh, it was, you know what I mean, quite, quite a dope ass experience. But yeah, Wiz Khalifa is like mm-hmm. one of my biggest, like, you know what I mean, motivational. Motivational, you know what I mean? I don't know, rappers that I feel like, you know what I mean, actually yeah, got inspired yeah. to make music. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, because, I mean, like, Wiz is... his day to day. Day to day shows and different things like that, you know what I mean? It was always cool to me, you know what I mean? He always gave you the full insight, even like behind the music and shit like that. So, yeah, Wiz definitely for sure. Yeah, those two for sure. Yeah, man. Well, we'll, I mean, we, sorry, go I ahead, cut in go there. ahead, T. Yeah, go I, just, ahead, I was real quick because you brought it up since you talking about your environment a little bit, like born and raised in L.A., if I'm not mistaken. How did that impact, you know, your kind of desire to, you know, enter into into, you know, this business, enter into being a musical artist? 
you know, how did it, how did it motivate you with the ups and the downs, you know, how did you manage the stress? How was your environment, you know, uh, a major part of, of kind of the, your music? Well, I think, yeah, like, like you said, de- uh, the environment definitely does play like a key role. You know what I mean? In the time that I was growing up, uh, there was a lot of things called like house parties. So like they were called mm-hmm. my time functions. I don't know if you remember those. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> functions. And you know, everybody <laughs> vibing, dancing, having a good time. And this was back before, like, you know what I mean? Everybody was smoking and drinking. So it was really just like, you know what I mean? Just on some real party vibes. You know what I'm saying? It was always a good time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Girls were dancing and shit like that. So I'll probably say, yeah, like functions, definitely being in L.A., the functions definitely made me want to like, you know what I mean, get more into music and shit like that, just because I would see the reaction that, you know what I mean, people would give, you know what I mean, in the party, you know what I mean, if you had a a, a dope song at the time, you feel me, everybody was dancing your shit, everybody yeah. knew right to it, you know what I mean, and I always kind of want to have that kind of same, like, you know what I mean, um, kind of feedback in a way, you know what I mean, I wanted to get that kind of that appraisal in a way. Just be the man, you feel me, that everybody's turning up to, everybody's dancing to, you know what I mean, you can have a good time to my shit. And you don't need to be drunk or high, you know what I mean? You can just really be at a, like, a, like a function, like, you know what I mean, back in the day, like when you were a kid and shit. Definitely That's like that. YG, you know what I mean, when YG was coming up and shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a show function music and shit. That's like the best thing about LA that I always tell people is such a different dynamic. Like living in New York for four years, it's more like apartment parties and like, yeah, you fuck with the pop smokes of the world, the uh, ASAP Mob and like local rappers like that, I mean, Boogie with the Hoodie and Cardi and people like that. But like LA is such a different vibe because if you live in LA, like you know the LA rappers, you know all their lyrics, their songs. Like you're saying, you go to a function party, you're only going to hear at an LA party. You're probably not going to hear it at Texas party, wherever the hell else. And it's like so uh, wholesome to the city, connected with the city and the people. And like you said, you don't even need any sort of substance to get lit on you just get lit off the music and vibe with it and then everyone's into it and that's like the best thing you know that's what music is for yeah. really it's supposed to be like a sort of a that drug part, for people part. to use and just listen to and have a, have a good time bro and like listening to your music it gets me hyped up i'm like hell yeah i'm gonna go fucking get rowdy man thank you. Oh, go crazy. i appreciate that's that dog. that's the goal man that's what we're trying to achieve but yeah no thank you though. i appreciate that sir yeah, man, for sure. But TJ, what's what's up with Charlotte, man? Because my boy here is from Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, you got the baby. Is that like kind of like the vibe? We got the baby hidden over there. We got the baby and J Cole, man. That's that's the two mm-hmm. over here. J Cole from yeah, where is he? Where was he? I think it was Fayetteville. Might be mistaken about that, but um, and, and and the baby's like from Charlotte, Charlotte. So it's you know he he grew up right here. Um, but I'm curious, like for for you, um, how does what are your perceptions? We've asked some, you know, some of our guests that are in the, you know, either rappers or, or musicians, what their opinions are about, you know, the current, you know, climate in regards to music and, and rappers and, and, and how things are, are currently slated out. What's, what's your taste in, in, the, in the current genre of music? Good, not good, could be better. What do you think? I mean, me, you know, what I mean, personally being an artist, I don't, I don't, I don't turn down anybody's, you know, what I mean, form of uh, creativity. You know, what I mean, everybody mm-hmm. you know, how to express themselves and, you know, what I mean, whatever the way they choose to. So as far as the way that music is going right now, I honestly feel like, you know, what I mean, it's going in a good direction. It's always going to continue to evolve. You know, what I mean, nothing's meant to stay the same. Fashion doesn't really stay the same. You know, what I mean, food doesn't really stay the same unless, you know, what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, what you want to eat and shit, but <laughs> everything, you know what I mean, changes, you know what I mean, everything's meant to like evolve, so I feel like, you know what I mean, at the current place or where music's at, especially due to COVID, you know what I mean, I feel like it's doing pretty well, you know what I mean, a lot of things are more online now versus like, you know yeah. what I mean, actually, Well, because you, know you can't have live events, you know, something, before I left uh, school and graduated, we, one of the courses that I was taking was in uh, live concerts, and you know, there was a lot of talk about how as COVID was happening and before we, you know, were essentially had to leave school, there was a lot of talks about how how would the industry be affected and things like that. But now you don't have a lot of, there's no musical festivals. There's been no live events. Everything is digital. Everything is social. How did you have to adjust, you know, when you were uh, in regards to just like getting your content out there? Did you not have any adjustment? Because that's kind of the channel that you were already using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely, for sure, I had to adjust a little bit uh, and just figure out, you know what I mean, what what strategies work the best for me, you know what I mean, in terms of just, like, pushing my music out. Like you said, you know, we're not able to go do shows or, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. little things like that, you know what I mean, even, like, a party, you can't really go to no No party. gigs, yeah, nothing. 
Yeah, so it's mainly just been like, oh, you know what I mean, via the internet, you know what I mean? Luckily, I have, like, you know what I mean, friends who love to share my music, too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's, a, you know what I mean, a big help, too. But, uh, yeah, it's all really just word of mouth right now and kind of yeah. just going through the internet. But, yeah, it's honestly been working very well, like I said, you know what I mean, just trying to push it myself and then having my friends, you feel me, who are in my circle help me push it, too, to people who may not even have heard of me before, so. So you feel like... You with COVID, you've, you've been able to actually work more because you've had more free time maybe to yourself, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, because you're yeah. forced to kind of stay home and not really do that many things. I mean, you can do stuff for sure, but like, you feel like, you know. Yeah, most most definitely. I feel like, you know what I mean, because of the whole COVID situation, you know what I mean, the, um, the just the like, you know what I mean, the mindset of like, all right, like, I feel like I need to be doing something. I'm not doing nothing at all. You know what I mean? I might as well just be fucking like, you know what I mean, making music, writing a song. So definitely a lot, a lot, way more free time and shit. But yeah. uh, I'd probably say like, it gave me more time to like, you know what I mean, re reflect on myself and actually like, you know what I mean, see what I'm talking about and like actually fucking critique my songs and, you know what I mean, get them down to like, you know what I mean, a point before I like, you know what I mean, just rush some shit out, you know what I mean? Actually got sure. more time to listen to something and actually go back and be like, you know what, I don't like this and come back and fix it and make it different. So yeah, I feel like, yeah, if anything, yeah, COVID has definitely given me more time, you know what I mean, to actually like, you know what I mean, critique my work and, and better it, you know what I mean? And take yeah, the time. absolutely. But like, you know what I mean, actually work on my craft. I'm curious, so, what are your thoughts on, uh, on, on freestyle and, and how often do you, kind of like your genre of music to those who don't know you know our audience how would you explain it well i mean i have i already <laughs> left freestyle and actually you know what i mean it's been like one of my <laughs> things like that's pretty much why i started rapping you know I me mean? as a young 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 dude you know what i mean uh started you know i mean freestyling at school and shit with your partners and after school <laughs> yeah because yeah. after school got the backpack on you know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And later on, you know, I mean, it, it left to those, you know what I mean, smoke sessions where niggas fade in and freestyling and shit. So yeah, freestyling is definitely a big a big part of my game. <laughs> but yeah, no, I love it, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel like it's one of those things that just, it keeps you sharp too, you know what I mean? It's always, you know what I mean, always, you know I me mean, preparing for the next word and already having your next shit, you know what I'm ready to say. So yeah, no, I think freestyling is very like, you know what I mean, important, you know what I mean? I feel like that's something that every artist should know how to do, you know what I mean? You should know how to freestyle and Facts. speak right off your mind and just learn mm -hmm. you know how to harmonize, you know what I mean? Cause this is really just like you know what I mean, stretching the word out. You know what I mean, you could say one word a different way, one song, and say yeah. a different song. You know what I mean? It's just about how you use it. You know what I mean, pretty much. But that's where the talent really comes out because I feel like those artists, those rappers that could that freestyle better than anybody else, it just flows a certain way, right? They end up being the ones that develop the best music, that have the best beats, that have the best lyrics. You know, because it just comes to them naturally, and they don't have to force anything. So when they're in a rut. When you're in a hole, you know, you're able to come out of it, you know, with that kind of consistency. So in regards to that, when you are in like a, I don't know how they, for writers, they call it a writer's block, right? What's it like for musicians when you have a musician's yeah. block? Well, um, for me, I, like, if anything, I try not to overwork myself. You feel me? If I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm if I really can't like, like, you know what I mean? If I'm stuck at a point, I really, I'll come back to that bitch tomorrow and like, I'll be in a whole different mindset. You know what I mean? Tomorrow's a brand new day. You know what I mean? Who knows what I'm going to be thinking about tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So always like, don't, don't feel like, you know what I mean? Especially like with now today's technology, you know what I mean? We have to, we have to fucking text to like come in and like punch in and, yeah. you know what I mean? That has to be like a straight, day, you know what I mean? Even though that's how you hear it, you know what I mean? When the music is displayed. Everything is like, you know what I mean? All sounds want to take, but you feel me? Sometimes they don't come back we can shit we're gonna come back to that's how you know how to like you know what I mean rush rush it out you know what I mean because when you rush shit that's when it's never like your best you know what I'm saying you should like you know what I mean just always take your time with it so even if you know what I mean you're a freestyle artist and shit like that and you stuck on something and you can't really like think of that that next day hey fuck it come back to that bit or you know what I mean if you if you cool with your homies and shit ask your boy for a line you know what I mean like hey what you think I should say you know what I mean? Sometimes all you need is that's one true. word, and then bam, that's you have to look, look off the rest. You know what I'm saying? So that's true. Yeah. So, so you know, anyway. a lot of a lot of musicians and artists get their inspiration from a lot of random things. Like you said, their mindset can change day to day, hour to hour. So what's like 
what do you, where do you really get your motivation uh, in terms of your lyrics and what you talk kind of talk about? Is it like life experiences, connections with people? What is it really? Yeah, mine's is mostly like life experiences and shit like, you know what I mean? I try to just like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Try to at least give some truth to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I don't want to just be here capping and shit to people all the time. But yeah, <laughs> most definitely life experiences. You feel me? Like I go through my weeks like where I'm like, all right, like I, I don't even want to record. I just want to like, you know what I mean? live my life and you know what I mean have an event happen and then I'm able to go and display that event you know what I mean through the song and shit uh -huh. uh, and then like I'll probably say like also like you know what I mean you get a lot of it from like you know what I mean TV and movies and shit like that like you know what I mean I don't know yeah. if you ever hear a lot of your artists favorite artists you know what I mean they bring up references from movies and TV shows or All like the time. You know what I mean? yeah whether it's sports you know what I mean so you can always find mm -hmm. like something that you can relate to or something that you know what I mean is like, you know what I mean, pretty much coexisting to everybody. Everybody can understand that metaphor or get where you're coming from, you know what I mean? So definitely like, yeah. I feed off my life and the shit that's around me, you know what I mean? TV, friends, movies, you know what I mean? Even, even other artists, you know what I mean? Other artists, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm 50 Cent, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> other shit, you know what I mean? It's always something you could like, kind of like, you know what I mean? Get some inspiration from in a way, you know what I mean? Don't, everything is inspirational, you know what I mean? Like, that's like an artist, you know what I mean? Like. They're looking at a flower, you know what I mean? That flower is inspirational to them, you know what I mean? Just the way it looks, the color of the flower, they're going to paint that flower and, and make it beautiful yeah, as fuck. For sure. You you got to you gotta make a song, know what I mean, bro. <laughs> yeah. that. My bad, my bad. That's my, nah. my favorite word, but yeah. Nah, not for real. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, everything can come out of nothing, right? What do you mean? Yeah. And then make a whole ass song about it. Like, for real. Like, you look <laughs> yeah. at all these different rap songs. I think that's cool, you know? It's, it's, it's like just noticing yourself or noticing others around you and then listening to others around you and then you make a song out of it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do say it a lot. I think it would be pretty good. Be I good, would enjoy bro. it. Yeah. I'm curious. I'll chill out on it. I'll chill out on it. <laughs> no, 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 chill no. Out on it. Hey, no, don't no, chill out on it. Be yourself, man. That's cool, what it's for. Bro. Yeah. But that's speaking about that, I want to, you know, I'm curious. I asked you a little earlier, but what's what's going on with the with the graffiti in the back? You're in the garage, you said. So tell me, you call yeah, it the lab, yeah. right? You call it the lab. Yeah, yeah the lab, the dungeon, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is just where, like, you know, what I mean, my spot. You know, what I mean, it's a little garage and shit. This right, you know, what I mean. Mm -hmm. Come in here and record music and shit sometimes. I got the mic right here. I don't know if you can see, but you know what I mean? Oh, shit. Yeah. That's music. dope, yeah. Uh, just chill, you know what I mean? Get creative. I come in here and write sometimes. Uh, just come in here and chill. This is my little man cave, you know what I mean? This is where I can just come and be my own self and do all, all this shit. But all this shit's pretty much old. This from back when I was in like fucking high school type shit. Yeah. I don't even fucking draw, <laughs> draw no more or nothing like that. No, but it feels yeah, like the kind of setting. Cool, it feels, yeah, it's a cool setting. It feels like a kind of like, that like you were saying it's your little it's like a man cave it's it's your it's like your you know mtv my crib you know what i mean it's like it, it's a vibe like that's where you would you know it's the lab like that's where you go to get you know get the work done and and i'm sure that that that's probably necessary as part of your kind of repertoire and just like coming up with new stuff right, right. um obviously this weekend uh we got the grammys coming up on i think march the 14th so it's this sunday right p yeah what are your thoughts on the grammys and like accolades in general and kind of you know, it, it, just like the way the music industry is kind of, you know, idolized in that respect with the Grammys. What are your thoughts? I mean, you know, I mean, growing up, like, I used to feel like, damn, like, all right, I want a Grammy, but I feel like that doesn't, <laughs> like, necessarily mean, like, you know what I mean, anything anymore nowadays. Because mm. there's a lot of artists, I feel like, out there who should have Grammys who don't have Grammys, you know what I'm saying, that we mm -hmm. listen to every fucking day. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I really don't try to like, all right, justify like, all right, this is the best artist ever because he has a fucking Grammy. You know what I mean? That doesn't yeah. mean anything yeah. to me. Uh, uh, awards can be handed out by the people. You know what I mean? People can like, yeah. give, you know what I mean? Somebody in the award. You know what I mean? My bad. No, I don't keep saying shit. But people can give somebody a award. Like Astro, <laughs> no, I, I, I feel about that. Astro mm -hmm. was fucking great. Did that man win anything off of that shit? No. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. was like, that was lame, man. Was it was lame um, as hell. Album of a lifetime, right there. But that just goes yep. just to show you to prove like not everybody's gonna win something, and it's okay not to always be a winner as long as you're a winner in somebody else's eyes. You know what I mean? That's all that matters. But isn't so much about it like, like just marketing Facts. and like well connected, being connected, and that's kind of the, what happened with Travis Scott is like 
I mean, people think he would be well connected with the with the bosses in the business, but at the end of the day, like it's there's a lot of money that goes into marketing for these things. You think about not just the Grammys, but you think about the SAG Awards and the Academy Awards. It's all about all the money that gets thrown towards just being able to put up on one advertisement a Grammy Award winning artist or you know an Academy Award winning star. And it, it, I feel like a lot of the time that just damages the credibility, honestly, of of institutions and then also it damages the ability for us to really like understand you know great content um there's so many in most like in sports right you've got uh, how do we track who's the greatest right who won the most chips or who won the most super bowls right but in in, in music and in, in art it's a different kind of competition you know i feel like there's no way to track those kind of things yeah yeah definitely definitely you know what i mean everybody has their own tape Everybody has their own mm-hmm. liking, you know. What I mean? I'm, I'm not yep. gonna have the same favorite artist as you or or him, you know. What I mean, everybody's gonna think differently. We all have our own minds. Yeah, for Who sure. might be like, be like, all right, like, yeah, just because this person has an award, like, yeah, I, I need to fucking listen to their music. Like, fuck that. I'm gonna listen whenever I want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as it should be, man. And I think that also a way to get people to listen to your music more is to kind of stand out and have your own sort of style. I feel like a lot of people that rap now kind of. I mean, you, you're always going to copy each other. Look at, like, Bruno Mars is famous still, but he completely copied Michael Jackson, Prince. And it's like, he admits that. He's like, I wouldn't be the, uh, the artist I am without those people. Same with, like, a Kobe Bryant. He wouldn't be That's Kobe crazy. Bryant without a Michael Jordan, you know? So it's like, you should be able to copy and take from different artists and then make it your own in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because they're not writing the songs for you. They're not performing for you. That's you at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you're like copying their style or whatever. Who cares if you make it better, make it the same, do your own thing. It's That's all that really matters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. And I think that like with you, I think that you fit in the category of like the Travis Scott's of the world, the card pieces of the world and people like that, that get people uplifted and hype and feeling good about themselves, having a good time, living life. And that's what I go to music for. Yeah, you can listen to shit that's like talking about depression and da, 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 da. I'm like, cool, that's a time and place for that. But like music like that you make is more so that's an everyday vibe. Throw it on, you're feeling good. You're getting rowdy, you're having a good time, any type of situation at the beach, at a party, or chilling in your crib, playing video, whatever it is, that's like a universally listened to music, which is sick, which I like and like to find the music. Yeah, now that's is that my, like that's, what you're shooting for, basically. Yeah, that's my goal. You know what I mean? I don't want to yeah. uh, be out here just giving giving negative vibes. I'm not a negative person. <laughs> I want to make mm-hmm. you feel good. Like even when I'm having a bad day, like I'm gonna still try to make you feel good and and you know what I mean the whole. I like to see a smile on people's faces. That gives me, you know what I mean, makes me feel good inside too. Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that I'm aiming for. I want to bring the energy out and make you want to fucking like get your ass up and, and, and jump and party and have a good ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But we need that right now. We, we've been yeah. needing that that kind of music. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. That, that, I think of walk up songs for bass low when I hear your music. I'm like, I want that <laughs> shit before I go up the bat, bro. I'm about to go. Yeah, I, I think of pre game. Right I think of pre game before you about to go on the too, field, yeah. bro. Like, that's. That's that kind of music, man. Thank yeah. you, thank you. That's that's what we need, man. Hopefully, we we uh we get the uh, the first pitch. You know, what I mean, at the Dodgers game one day. You know, what I mean, it's just like, oh, <laughs> for, sure. <laughs> for sure. So, bro, I just got like one more kind of question I want to ask you, and it's about money and monetizing your rap game. So, a lot of artists today, you know, get kind of getting screwed over with streaming services. They don't get paid as much as they should. Uh, but then you see a lot of artists that tour constantly of constant performances and shows and sell their merch and then they do this and that and have different maybe a weed business whatever it may be video game streaming whatever it is so they're making money left and right now as opposed to just focusing on rapping is that something you want to get into or how do you envision yourself making money and maximizing the most money you could possibly have well, definitely. Uh, I, I, I find myself, you know what I mean, being an entrepreneur. I'm not a man that just wants to do one thing, you know what I mean? You might see Will in a movie one day, you know what I mean? You might, yeah, you might yeah. see me uh, <laughs> like teaming up you, with man. this company to, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So I definitely w- wouldn't mind, you know what I mean, venturing off. Uh, music isn't the only thing that I would like to do in my life, you know what I mean? I don't have like a set list yet, but you know what I mean? I want to be involved in everything pretty much you know what i mean my name should be everywhere you know what i mean no matter if it's a video game or oh, yeah. we're on a fucking you know what i mean bag of chips shit you know what I mean? we want to be involved for sure you know what i mean yeah. I, feel like I could always give some kind of like 
I don't know, some kind of standpoint behind it and like give my own yeah, like fucking two sure. cents and make it like likable towards my generation or my kind of, you know what I mean, my people, you know what I mean, in a way, people who fucking feel the same way that I do. And I feel like, you know what I mean, it's pretty, you know what I mean, we're, we're the younger generation now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of the shit that we say or that we like is what everybody fucking likes right mm-hmm. now, you know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. Definitely feel like I can you know I mean? give that fucking standpoint and kind of help out in those situations. But definitely would love to venture off. I'm not sure, you know what I mean, where, where to yet, but you know I mean? Those opportunities do open up uh, for sure and be taking it. You know what I mean? I don't want to be doing music for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. And a lot of people look at Travis Scott, for instance. He got the McDonald's deal. He got all sorts of stuff going on. Be like, oh, he's selling out, selling out. I'm like, you're not selling out, man. He's just trying to mm-hmm. take over the world, bro. What are you talking mm-hmm. about selling out? Yeah. That's just conquering everything. I, I, I mean, selling out it. has to do with values, right? It has to do with that his music's going to change, that the way he sells it's going to yeah. change. I don't think that's been the case at all, nah. right? The music has stayed the same. It's gotten better, if anything, you know? He's just... Yeah. <laughs> Doing his thing, bro. He's an icon. He's trying to be that icon. Like you said, be everywhere. Your name's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And why not, bro? Not only does that attract more people to your music, to your primary occupation, it allows you to do different things that you may want to do and make some money on the side. And it's like, why not? Mm -hmm. I'm in full support of that. And it's like, it's crazy how people are just just haters. It's just great branding. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, People just be haters, though, sometimes. I mean, you have to understand, like, these being a musician, you are a no, no, I was about that. No, you're good. No, man, no, what was you going to say? Yourself. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like a... Yeah, go for it, bro. Oh, my no, I'm saying, being a musician, you're like a brand. You're like a yeah. brand. Everything that you do, if I, fucking, if I fucked up, and that shit going to be all on TMZ, like, oh, with the gates, with the gates, with the gates. But if I do something good, you know what I mean? They're going to be like, oh, with the gates, with the gates. So you are a brand. Mm, you know what yeah. I mean? Essentially, yeah. you know what I mean? If you do something pretty good, that's branded behind you. Totally what you 100%. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Oh, my bad. My bad. I was trying to cut you off, buddy, dog. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, you're the guest here. We're asking Shut the, the questions, up, you know. D. Shut up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's no, but I think that's the that's the case, right? Like it's just that that's the the money structure. I mean, that's how things are in society. You know, we have mar- massive platforms for marketing. A lot of big companies and. If you want to get your name out there and you want to be an icon, you've got to partner up and have endorsements and do all these things, regardless of what industry you're in. And so I, I give him all the credit in the world for having the wherewithal and the foresight to understand not only how to make money, how to spread his message, how to, because that's really what he's doing. I think he's doing it for a beneficial cause of trying to spread his message of positivity to more people, make it more global. And I think you're going to see that hopefully coming out of this pandemic with a lot of rappers is you know, this kind of more global, um, just, just not just atmosphere, but just kind of a, a desire for more connectivity in a, in a, in a way. And music's one of those things that bring people together. And I, and I, I think that that's the way music's headed, you know, especially in the 21st century. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely ready for that. I need this shit to open back up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sir. sure. Well, bro, I just want to thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure Appreciate as it. always. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Absolutely, brother. You know, I saw love. It was a pleasure. (laughs) It's a pleasure. (laughs) All right, my boy. Well, I'll catch you later and talk soon, okay? All right, gentlemen. Thank y'all. Enjoy your day. Uh, Yeah, that's it. All right, bro. (laughs) Nice meeting you. Have a great day. Nice meeting you, too, dog. Oh, man. So, dude, short story to get into kind of our background and relationships. So for the audience that doesn't know, um, i sure some of you will know this dude. But um, basically, I went to middle school with this guy. I met him in sixth grade. And we became, like, really good friends, uh, part of the crew. His family is super nice. Hope they're all all well. And um, talking about freestyles, you know, with friends and stuff like that. We That was something we used to do, man. Everyone would just freestyle, throw on a beat. <laughs> and there was always that, like, yeah. it's all love at the end of the day, but there's so much shit talking. And I think that made people a better rapper because so many people from my friend group or just that school in general are now mu- musicians, artists, and trying to get involved in the entertainment industry as a whole. So he's, an, he's a rapper, for yeah. instance. I have another friend's a rapper. Actually, you have three producer friends. There's, like, so many musically talented talented and gifted people yeah you know a lot of music you know a lot of people in that industry yeah yeah man so it's cool it's a cool industry and it's like just seeing all these people how they differ in their styles of rapping or singing or doing this and that like i have a rapper that's more of a lyrical kendrick lamar type figure i have will for instance who's more of the travis scott hype 
Let's mm-hmm. get rowdies, have a good time type of figure. And I think that's great. And I think that everybody has their own art. And it's, and it's just a matter of being able to express your art without fear of judgment. And I think that's what a lot yeah. of artists are scared of. Like, oh, they don't like my song. It's like, sure. oh, fuck it. I want to release whatever I want. One, two, three, four, five people can listen to it. doesn't matter. A hundred thousand can yeah. listen to it. It's all the same to me because I'm doing something I love and enjoy. And you can just feel and hear and listen to that compassion mm-hmm. and and exploration through music that all these artists journey um, journey mm-hmm. with and, and and embark on this course of like, who am I going to be? And this is cool to watch. And again, the freestyle, I was always freestyling too. That shit was fun as hell, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, me and you were just a bull and freestyle yeah. just for fun. <laughs> And it's cool, man. It's like a I had the beatboxing down. That's my thing, bro. Oh, for sure, dude. And Not the storm a lyricist, of but yeah. It's all good, bro. It's, I got you covered, man. Give me a beat. I know. I that's you, it's, it's a t- it's a duo, man. You need the, you need both. You need the you need the exactly. music and you need the, the you lyrics. Need the engineer producing the thing, and you need the yep. the artist making the lyrics and singing, rapping, exactly. whatever he's doing. And it's like it's just a form of therapy for a lot of people, I think, too, just to be able to express your thoughts and get them all out there, like just yeah. splurging on words, sure. saying whatever, rhyming, and it's fun. It's a good time at the end of the day. But, yeah. you know, bro, I, one thing about the Grammys, I want to ask you this question. I was curious. I was thinking about this today. So The weekend came out and said, I am not going to submit any more music to the Grammys moving forward. I'm done with it. This was a press release that happened Um earlier this week and i just want to hear your thoughts about that because he obviously was nominated which is insane i think blinding lights and his album was was really good it should have been nominated and it and it was just kind of ridiculous that they didn't recognize him what are your thoughts on that i mean it's obviously it's whack and then he had zayn malik too uh on top of that calling uh Mm. the oscars basically a shit show and, and and it's or not the oh, sorry, the Grammys. The Grammys um, yeah. yeah, and and but Oscars too. Right? I mean, if you're gonna, if we're gonna be honest, but I think yeah, I sure, think that sure. yeah, for sure. And I think I think with uh with him specifically, I mean, he was performing at the Super Bowl. I mean, this was kind of he released so many good. I mean, just uh, uh, songs this year, and I think he's been a consistent artist. You know, he's got he's got some very un and we were talking about it earlier, universally appreciated music, and I think that's kind of what he is now is he's more universal like my mom loves him i love him like that's hard to do to to bring together uh different age groups and demographics and to him for him not to be represented at the grammys i think is quite it's crazy it's not per se the grammys i think are not attempting to have different kinds of music as part of you know it's award show it's not i don't think that they're not diversifying per se i mean they could use a little bit more of it but i don't think that's the case it's really more they're just picking not the best music they're not they're not choosing correctly i think most people would agree and i think as the grammys needs to start understanding that with music they need to it's twofold you want to have those original songs that are that are not massively popular but are great pieces of music that are not mainstream, but great pieces of music and have that, you know, incorporated as well as those, you know, albums and songs that are, or records that are just like top of the chart and have the universal praise, right? Because you want to have a bit of both so that you're able to say that we're still taking creativity and originality to a degree. And then we're also understanding that this is a money, this is a money-making business. And if you are one of the more popular artists in the country you're going to have more um grammy award nominations and i think that's the way it needs to be going forward but i mean you could probably speak more of this you know more on this uh specifically but i think you're seeing a lot of artists not just him yeah. really coming out and say i'm not gonna be a part of this anymore i'm not gonna send them over my music because that's how it works essentially right is that yeah. you know they send over their music and then the the I don't know what the committee is for the for the for the Grammys, but they 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 basically you know they vote on you know these awards, but yeah, yeah. It's uh, speaking on the nominations, for instance. I feel like it's kind of turned into the American Music Awards or the um, mm. People's Choice Awards because it's more like yeah. a popularity contest, which is mm. but then again the weekend they get nominated so the week it's like, popular that's what i'm saying yeah you know and then you got a lot of i mean i think this year they did it kind of kind they did a kind of a decent job with getting more underground artists not recognized and nominated 
I believe Freddie sure. Gibbs was nominated uh, for his album Alfredo with the Alchemist, um, which is my, I think that should win personally. I think West Side Gun was mm -hmm. nominated. He was a collective of different artists within this group, West Side Gun, which is really good. Um, but then you look at, uh, I believe, Record of the Year, it's between Dua Lipa, her song, which is dope. I, I mm -hmm. really think Dua Lipa is, I do not like pop music, but I think Dua Lipa is really good. She brings She's that good, kind yeah. of nostalgic vibe. Well, I mean, her album was Speech and Nostalgia, so of course it's nostalgic. Yeah. It's very disco-y, and, and it's just a good time. It's a good vibe. I think Doja Cat's song got nominated. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rockstar, The Baby, and Roddy Rich, which I think is like a trash song personally i think it's horrible like, it's so annoying beyond annoying. but it was so popular it, at the time it kind of like you know what i mean well of course it was bro and tiktok yeah just, but like, blew it up completely and i think it's like a, <laughs> it's like oh, i can't say anything. <laughs> but then you have then you have megan the stallion savage remix with beyonce which is also oh my god cannot stand that song bro i think this is another thing we could go on bro i could riff off of this real quick so you got megan the stallion cardi b and nikki and those are kind of the three. Oh yeah we'll this is your this is your moment bro like, this is my moment it. to shine yeah. right now <laughs> i wish that i could have my moment for life which is right now shout out to you nikki because you're the best you're always going to be the queen other than lil kim because she's the og and maybe Missy Elliott and people like that. That's that's rap, bro. That is like, mm -hmm. fuck yeah, that's just raw, creative. It's new and inventive. And then Nikki kind of like used things from both of those Missy Elliotts and and um, and uh, Lil Kim's of the world to kind of formulate their mm -hmm. own her own thing. Eve, another artist like that. And Nikki is so talented because she's able to sing, she's able to rap. She was an OG in the game, Young Money, uh, YMCA, yes. and all that stuff with Drake, Lil Wayne. Uh, Gotta gotta, you know, all those people. Barbershop three. Thinking, people on the, basically, people <laughs> on the bedrock song, bros. Who you can basically think about, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, she's the OG. She started, or the OG of of our of our age, I guess you could say. Sure. And then you got Cardi B, who came in and literally said, "Let me l replicate your entire sound, your voice, and use the Migos to make me famous," which is great. Whatever did you think? I think she's mm -hmm. very annoying, personally. I don't think uh, maybe like one or two of the songs I could fuck with and vibe with. Like, hey, it's fine, it's cool. But I don't think she deserved a Grammy, number one, over a Pusha T album with Daytona, Mac Miller, Swimming. Uh, oh, yeah. Mac Travis Miller, Scott, yeah. Astroworld. And it was Mac Miller. I, I mean, I thought it was between. Somebody, I, thought, I mean, I didn't think he would win because it was post. What do they say? Post uh, for Mac, right? Um, more posthumous. Album. Yeah, right. That's what they call it, right? And then, um, yeah. and then obviously Astroworld got, I mean, they got screwed. He got screwed just Yeah. And on everything but i mean you you were really upset about cardi like you were well that's when i always I, I remember that already on the on the mindset of okay the grammys is getting ridiculous it's getting out of hand mm -hmm. everyone that should win and that everybody knows that knows music and listens to music in depth and really goes past the surface level of mainstream shit knows these artists should win and deserve this this crown this title this accomplishment and achievement and mm -hmm. recognition yet you have people that blew up because it's a socially uh socially awareness type of deal so when i say that mm -hmm. cardi b only woman in the category rap woman that was nominated in the past like who knows how long she won because mm -hmm. of that and that's like oh we need more black artists nominated we need more black actors nominated academy awards maybe we'll give them an award da, da, da. and instead of giving why does it have to be that why did, why can't it just be the best music period not the best women mm -hmm. artist woman excuse me artist the best male artist black male yeah. artist latino male artist not just the best music bro and they don't mm -hmm. do that they're clearly biased towards I guess picking up the slack of the past that you could say of not giving out nominations to to minorities mm -hmm. and and the thought of gender equality and whatever. But it's like that's total bullshit, bro. Cause there were so many black artists back in the day that won awards, bro. Prince, Michael Jackson. Uh, you go back to like Herbie Hancock, or like mm -hmm. Earth Wind and Fire, fucking all these people, bro. Black people have been winning and minorities have been winning for sure. It is yeah. and then it's like I don't know, man. It's just like, I think that these voters are so influenced by the status quo and trying to look good in, in the tabloids 
in the news and blogs in people's eyes and trying to gain that trust but in doing so they've actually hurt themselves by being disingenuine and not really giving recognition to people that are more deserving or that actually put out the best record and then Mm-hmm. Moving on with the best songs, um, there's one by Black Pumas, and I say Black Pumas. Do you know who Black Pumas are, TJ? I have an idea. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of people don't know the group Black Pumas. I've known them for years, and they finally yeah. got over that upper echelon tier of recognition with artistry, with their artistry. So they got nominated for Best Record of the Year. And this song, along with the Anderson Pack song, are the two, are my two favorite, for instance, and because I, I number one talk about social issues, you talk about shit that matters, they talk about day in the life of what they went through, mm-hmm. they talk about real life experiences as opposed to like, yeah, I'm a savage, cool, I'm a they're based out in Texas, like, though, right? Or something, in Austin, a shit, bro. they're based in Austin, so, they're based in Austin, right? Like Pumas, I believe so, I believe so, okay, that's where I've heard, so, from, heard them from, yeah, they're really good, really good, really, really good say that three more times really good <laughs> good good but yeah. um yeah dude like megan Thee stallion beyonce song and first of all why beyonce got record of the year like i didn't even hear that fucking song that she dropped like i can tell you the name off the top of my head it was and i was listening to a snippet of it i'm like what like what yeah. i don't get this infatuation and and basically worship of beyonce you know i don't think her music is all that great to be honest with you i don't i really really don't i think her music's good i think her music's really good but i i do think that there's a there definitely you're right about the fascination yeah i think well my my thing is like look beyonce is an icon and and she's a great performer greatest Mm -hmm. of her generation maybe i could say that in terms of what she does in the pop genre but i think that when you throw beyonce on a soul song that's sick like something different. Like the song yeah. Halo was dope. I like that song Halo. Yeah. I think she, that's when she's really singing good. But then you look at her sister, Solange, who's staying in her niche and not selling out, so to speak, and kind of just doing her own thing, doing her jazzy mm. vibes, being cool. And she's so much better, 10 times better to me, to the ear, to my ears, at least. And I and I think maybe a lot of people would disagree yeah. with me. I think Rihanna is also better than Beyonce. Maybe people would disagree with me. I think Alicia oh, no, Keys I actually agree with than... you on that one. I agree you with you agree on that one. I'm, that more, one. Okay. I'm a Rihanna fan. I mean, I don't think, I think they're all really good. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't listen much to Beyonce's sister, to be quite yeah. honest about it. But I know that yeah. she makes really quality, good quality music and it's yeah. unique. But I think that, I think that in the case of Rihanna and Nikki and I mean, I think they're all great. I think they're great in different ways. They have different appeal. I think that Rihanna's appeal is more emotional. I think uh, in the sense of like her lyrics and the way she kind of, um, I think it also has to do with just like her, their, the, from, from music videos to like her clothing and like she's more of like a brand in that regards. I don't want to say a brand, but she she brands herself in, in, a, in a very kind of, um, in a very universal way again, right? And then yeah. uh, in, in regards to like, when I think of um, Beyonce, Beyonce is global. Like she's a global yeah. icon and she's obviously, you know, her and Jay-Z are a team, but it's, it's at the same time, I think a lot of it has to do with like, she's in, she's been, she's been an actress. Like she's done a bunch of different yeah. things, modeling. Like she, I think a lot of it has to do with at a point it's more than just appreciation for her music, it's appreciation for her. And I think that's what her fans sure. would say, um, especially her most ardent fans. Yeah, I, I I get what you're saying for sure. Mm-hmm. And like, I was just thinking as you were saying these things, it's like, you could look at the top five women art or vocalists, I guess you could say, that are in the mainstream. So, I mean, Adele hasn't made anything in a while, but Adele, Beyonce, Rihanna, uh, I guess... I think Ariana now Grande. you got to throw in, yeah, Ariana Grande is for sure in there. I think she's the first, number one right now, just out of like what are, who's are you most talking known. about voice or most known. No, 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 no. no. I'm, you were saying you were saying top five. Oh, and then like Taylor most Swift, known, right? I guess, too, would be in that. Yeah. So I think Taylor Swift, uh, <laughs> Ariana Grande. I think she has the best voice. I think but she's the best voice. A lot of the songs she's been in that poppy rap, and I think pop has moved towards that mm. rap getting rap beats, heavy bass, have some snares on it. And then instead of singing, they're more kind of rhyming, rapping, singing hybrid Mm. thing going on. And I think that's lame. 
think they should stick to, I mean, whatever it sells, it's always going to sell. You got a formula. It's very formulaic in nature, just like Drake. Drake is very formulaic with his hits. God's Plan, shitty song. Billions of hits, right? <laughs> Horrible song. Um, <laughs> and it works because that's the formula, man. You get yeah. a catchy beat and you tailor to a universally listened audience uh, with, with that kind of ear for just like mainstream type of vibes. Like I could probably go to all those people that love Drake and listen to stuff. No, get me wrong. I like Drake too. I think Drake is great. I think he brings it like Lemon Pepper Freestyle. Yeah. Like all of my favorite Drake songs are all the vibe songs. So Lemon Pepper Freestyle, BB King Freestyle, The Ride, 30 for 30 Freestyle. Like all those songs that people are like, what the fuck's that, right? So no mm-hmm. one like listens to those actual songs and, and Fire Desire yeah. is a good one. Um, there's like a lot of good Drake vibe songs, bro, that a lot of people do not disturb that goes overlooked. Mm-hmm. See all these stuff's popping in my head. But that's the problem, I think, with all these mainstream songs that get blown up and get a lot of recognition. I don't think they really deserve the recognition because the artistry within the songs aren't as great as they sh- as as they are compared to other songs that they may have that are more lyrical in nature mm-hmm. that actually talk about real stuff that matters, real life issues, instead of like, like God's Plan, I get. It was more like he did that whole music video with it, donations and giving scholarships to people. It's like, oh, this is God's plan for you. But it's like, yeah. bro, that's also telling me, like, okay, so you think you're God, Drake? <laughs> like, okay, that's very sure. fucking egotistical, you know, which I guess <laughs> out of anybody, he could do that because he's the biggest artist of our damn generation. And let me ask yeah. you one quick question, bro. Yeah. Do you think some, I was talking to this chick. She said that, uh, shout out to Sauce, my boy, for telling me this, but telling me that this one chick was telling him that Bad Bunny is, is a better and bigger artist than Drake. I'm not gonna say anything. What do you think? What do you think about that comment statement? I think my face says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah. what to say about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, maybe it's just it's the uh, to a different audience, possibly, right? I mean, it could be yeah. you know because yeah. uh, maybe to an Hispanic audience or Latino. I don't know though. I mean, I I love I like them both, but I think that in, I, it's just that Drake's probably sold more. He sold more. Yeah. He's on more things, um, more endorsements. I mean, it's. I think I, I would say, but look, I mean, someone's going to, and, and I've talked about this with some people, especially my brother, actually. We were just saying, like, there's going to come a time, like, Drake's going to not necessarily fall off, but, like, it's yeah. just going to be time. And it's coming up soon. It's going to be a few yeah. years where he's going to maybe try some more things out, but eventually, like, people are going to move on to the next artist, and he will become, He'll. I, this is what happens. I think a lot of the time it becomes there's very strong appreciation for the craft, the music, um, the overall energy, how much it's in our lives. I mean, we always forget, like anytime we go out to a restaurant, bar, club, we're at the home, we're at the house, we're watching a movie, like these, these pieces of music are incorporated in a lot of things in our life. And so yeah, in many sure. ways, they'll say like, when you smell something that's familiar to you, a memory kind of comes through. Like you, you, there's a memory that, that comes through. Similar with a song, there's memories that are that are shared with that kind of music yeah. about where you were and what you were doing and that kind of stuff. And I think, so the appreciation for his music kind of turns into then the appreciation for him as a human being. It mm-hmm. becomes appreciation for what he's done off, you know, off the field, I guess you could say, but outside yeah, of the-, no, the yeah, like outside of the 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 um this space of the the confines of which she would be you know performing or or, or yeah. you know uh, in the studio and and so all that becomes what it's really about and so similarly to Beyonce maybe her music isn't as good as it used to be but people appreciate her and then people will appreciate Drake similarly so I think there's certain music mus- musical artists that are that are in that kind of category yeah. right where like even you know we have discussions about the you know the Michael Jacksons of the world what to think of a Michael Jackson who you know his music was amazing but and was well recognized and well appreciated globally on a way that I don't think we've ever seen a global icon however he had a lot of misgivings as a human being and did a lot of bad things how do we how do we discuss that how do we you know, feel about it. And, and I think with that, it, but it's another example, right? Like of like appreciating the vibe of Definitely. what, like when you think of Michael Jackson, I think of before I was born and into like the late nineties. And it's like a cultural feeling that you kind of have. So it was like, there's all these different things. And I think that that's where those are the things that'll stay in music that that'll never go away. You know, music itself will change for appreciation sure. for it, how it makes someone feel 
it's almost like, you know, it's, uh, you remind me a lot of like Anthony Bourdain in the sense of like, you are like someone who you could try four pieces of steak and yeah. you would know which one's the best, you know, which one's medium rare, oh, yeah. which one's, you know, cook, you know, like yeah, you have an idea that. of those things and you understand the intricacies of, of taste. Right. Yeah. And that being said, there's a lot Thank of people, you. I would I'll probably fall, of course, I'll probably fall somewhere in between of being like, where a, depending on if it's something I know well, if it's something I've tasted enough or I've heard enough that I can give you the answer on that when it comes to history, when it comes to certain food, some certain types of music and definitely with film and TV. However, I can't always like eat something that I've never had before and be like, oh, that's, that's the best. That's the best thing yeah. I've ever had. Oh, that's sure. amazing. I know yeah. that's good, right? So it's tough yeah. with music sometimes to be like, maybe it makes someone feel good, but it's also like not a popular song or it is a popular song like God's plan, but it, it's not a good song. So it's like, it's really interesting at that dynamic, I think. I agree, dude. It's all about expanding your palate, trying new things, exposing mm -hmm. yourself to new things, actively listening, for instance, is, is a really good tool skill to have because i always say you could be listening hearing but are you retaining right so mm -hmm. that just comes down to respecting yourself as well as the person you're listening to and giving them that respect and that time of day to actually process what they're trying to speak on what they're saying or how does this food taste? Let me take my time eating it instead of scarfing that shit up and <laughs> shitting it right out <laughs> hours later. And yeah. be like, damn, I just spent 30 bucks on a fucking steak for what? To scarf up. No, I remind you, did you have any did you have any fried chicken when you were down here in Atlanta by chance? Bro, shout out to the fried ribs. Yeah, fried ribs. That's fire. Oh my <laughs> lord. Woo. That shit was bomb, bro. Oh my god. That's fire. Anyone who's in Atlanta, people, go to the Beltline and there's a restaurant. I'll put the name in the description, but it's on the I Beltline. mean, I remember I I went in I went to the um, Beltline by ribs a few years ago, four years ago. They have yeah. a lot of nice places. Hey, Beltline reminds me so much of Chelsea Market. It's so similar. Yeah, it's, it's super similar. Shit. It's just flatter. Yeah. It's not yeah. elevated. That's pretty much the only yeah, yeah, difference. Yeah. yeah, it's super cool, man. But uh Speaking of New York, you know, baseball season's around the corner and spring training. Yankees are looking pretty good. Labor Torres stand went back to back yesterday. Yep. Hit some dingers. But then you look at Texas Rangers and their new idea of let's allow full capacity in all of our stadiums. Um, and that's kind of insane to me. <laughs> I don't I don't know that's how that's gonna play out. I mean yeah. the governor totally sold out and try to get some votes by opening back up the entire state he needed his supporters because he was on the downward trend in popularity but now i'm sure he'll get his his votes he needs to be revoted in the stadium thing and i'm sure the players are kind of excited about it but then there could be some players that are more hesitant to play maybe some opt-outs occur what are your thoughts yeah. on that do you think anything will arise from that or maybe opposing teams from like california the dodgers the giants sure. the a's there were a lot of problems last year. I mean, they had they they were criticized. I remember the Marlins. It started out with the Marlins. Remember, they had thirteen yeah. players that got tested positive, and it, it kind of just messed with the whole, the whole, really messed with everything. Like they weren't able to schedule like weeks of games. So I think, that, yep. I don't, I'm in a very. Everyone's excited to get out of this. I think it's like we're almost there. It's we're almost at the finish line, and it's like you're thinking about it. The the we've been able to yep. manufacture. Yep. Uh, vac vaccine super fast and people are getting them and people are getting back to normal and want things to open up and I think that's a fair point I think we, there's and we had this conversation with Brandon last week but I was trying to say you know I think it's important when we think of indoor any indoor anything that people should be wearing masks that I think that that yeah. makes logical sense because what you don't want to happen is a lot of people getting sick and then it also financially was probably beneficial because you don't want any lawsuits, number one. Number two, you don't also, you know, the second thing about that is that it just makes logical sense if you want to keep things open to not have people transferring it to, to a high degree. Where I disagree, where I think I've, I've changed my mind, I've changed my mind on this. And it, it took, not that I necessarily thought of it a certain way before, it's that I didn't really think about it that much. I do think that some of these lockdowns have been too long. 
too long. I think yeah. they're needed. I understand that it was yeah, different. Sure. You had a federal situation where the you had a different president, you had a different amount of money going in. That's all fair and, and, and all that's fair. That being said, I do think that there should have been a better understanding of this is how we're going to do things. We're going to plan for this. You know, even if there's a situation where cases arise, we can try to open things while also making sure people wear masks. Like if you go to some of these more like Californias and New Yorks of the world, people are going to wear masks. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you, you're sure. in California. Even I don't know what the mandate, percentage is. Still wear the masks. Yes, exactly. Like you, you're those in those areas specifically. That's what annoyed me is seeing, like initially it makes sense, but then I saw how like I'm sure you all, you your parents went shopping at the Trader Joe's or to the Whole Foods. Well, the yeah. Whole Foods is open. So why isn't the mom and pop shop open? Why are they yeah. getting screwed while the Whole Foods is having a good time? That kind of stuff to me, <laughs> I didn't really think about it that much until I was think, until I was like, wait a minute, I've been here and I've noticed that Harris Teeter, our grocery store is open. You've got these things that are, that that's the real, the reality, but there are a lot of other like dry cleaners that had to shut down. Like, yeah. and I think what it does is it just pits small business versus big business and it's not a good look. And when it comes into like sports, I do agree with you that I don't think you should have full capacity. It makes that's a, a, a ridiculous argument to have full capacity when I don't think even the team wants to play in front of full capacity. I think it, it makes more sense to ease it in. You know, we saw what the NFL kind of did. I think that kind of worked. Ease it in, spread things out a little bit. People yeah. should be allowed to come in and watch games. Absolutely. Maybe even, and I don't know if this is like, if there's even a way to do this, but maybe like if you get vaccinated, I don't know if that's even a possible, if you can even do that. And like if you, you get vaccinated, you can go to a game. Yeah, but yeah. I think that, that gets a little bit too like the privacy, right? But I think the most important thing is they're outdoors. Like all of the, you know, baseball games yeah. are outdoors. I think yeah, that- Which is better. Exactly. So I think, I think that'll be better. If they could spread things out, it'd be beneficial. Um, but I'm really like, I'm, I don't know who you're looking at, but I'm really looking at the, the Padres. This year, man. I think the, the Padres, yeah, they loaded. As long as the, the Dodgers don't win, up. I don't give a shit. Yep. Just, no, but the Padres are in their division, right? So it's like, we want, I want to see that. Yeah, I want to see them. My Giants you know? are like, <laughs> going to be there two years. Give them two years. It'll be it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. I'll be back in two years. Uh, Yankees, uh, Yankees, Padres would be a good World Series. I just need the Yankees to get there, man. They've been fucking blowing it, and they got to change their mentality. The reason why the Yankees are losing is because they think mm -hmm. they could win by the, the long ball, and that's only going to bring you so far in MLB, especially in playoffs. Playoffs are a different ball game. It's a different atmosphere you're, you're playing in. And just, you can't just rely on hitting home runs. You got to be able to have that technical swing, move a runner yeah. over, play the yeah. small ball, and score at all costs. As opposed to like, okay, fuck it, boom. Just maybe one of the one of the at bats that we could have is a home run. There's one run on the board, but no, nah, get some runners on base, make the defense work, play a different yeah. game, put pressure on the pitcher. It's like ridiculous. The game of baseball has, has evolved so much into sure. a place that I personally don't like because look at the Giants. We won three World Series with the, the band of misfits, they call this, with players that just got the job done, similar to yeah. the Patriots. Do your job. You know, everyone has a role to play, small, big, mm -hmm. medium, large, doesn't matter. And as long as you get that role done, maybe it's laying down a bunt for somebody. Maybe it's... Yeah making a good play in the outfield. Maybe it's stealing a base. Maybe he's doing these little things right. That but the Giants the have team... like a lesser payroll, right? Nah, dude. They don't? They, they have a high like payroll? Fourth most, yeah. Oh, it's, really? I didn't know that. Okay. It's the Is that probably because biggest... of the economy because of the San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's a big market. And you got the mm -hmm. Yankees, Dodgers, Red Sox, Giants, Phillies, Cubs, those are the big markets, you know. Mm -hmm. White Sox have sure. pretty, pretty good money to spend too. Not so much the A's though. Oakland's different. They, as yeah. you know, Moneyball. They really try to thrive off their farm system and cheap contracts, veterans to yeah. complement the young players. And it's the formula works to an extent. They've been good yeah. the past couple of years. They've been good historically. I mean, you look at when Ricky Henderson played, they won a ton of World Series. So yeah, it works, but you do have to spend at the end of the day, especially getting stars, yes. you know. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a very large team sport. You can just have, like a Mike Trout, he's stuck in, in Anaheim. He hasn't even made the fucking playoffs, bro. The best player ever. 
Okay. Exactly. He hasn't made the playoffs yet. It's, it's crazy. How many years? Yeah, Nine sad. years or something? Like yeah, it's sad, and he needs to this year. They got to do it for him. But, you know, uh, moving to another topic, bro. I, uh, we kind of talked about this a little while ago, but, you know, they had Meghan Markle and, and Harry yeah. on Oprah. And everyone's asking me, P, did you watch it? Did you watch it? I'm like, no, I don't watch that I asked shit, you that. bro. I don't watch that I asked shit. you that, I'll bro. Tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. There's so much going uh, going wrong in the world right now, going yeah. on in the world right now, and not happening in the world right now. When I say that, there's things that aren't happening that should be happening, that we should be focusing mm-hmm. on. There's a lot yeah. going on as well, meaning there's still COVID vaccines, all this stuff. And yeah. this, for instance, is something that, frankly, should have just been on Bravo, bro. If you want a reality television show, you want a reality The Crown, but, you know, not a Netflix series. But in reality, this is what you got on this interview, bro. And it's like, mm-hmm. why does their life, what they want to do, affect mm-hmm. me and affect anybody else except for that yeah. fucking family that's still royalty? And look, the fucking crown yeah. is not even the goddamn leader of the country, bro. It's the prime minister. And yeah. It's the parliament. Okay. Yeah, it's just, they're just called the head of state. That's it. They call head of state because it's tradition. It's just a traditional thing. Yeah. Then people that, and like you look at Spain, they still have a king too. And mm-hmm. they have yeah, there are a, a lot of monarchy. European. Like, yeah. a lot of Europe because it's old. It's old. Mm-hmm. It's old history and it's going to be around. And I don't, I don't hate on it because it's around. I think it's cool. I think it's awesome if you see yeah. the tradition of it. The representation of it and things like that i think that's, that's super cool but when you mm-hmm. try to exploit and bring all this drama to the world it's like it's like why the fuck do you Meghan markle prince harry queen queen whatever all these people why do you need to be vetted and verified the queen, by yeah. all of us you're fucking royalty. You're going to live a lavish life no matter where the fuck you are. Sure. So why should I give a shit about what's going on? You lied. He lied. These lied. You got Pierce Morgan. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't like her. Like, <laughs> Pierce Morgan. Yeah, because I heard about that. you are insane, bro. Like, you got I was following that too. That's, that was You're interesting. such a child. Yeah. I was so childish. You walked off the set because he was called out. Like, what are you, five years old, bro? You get your ego yeah. too big. Like, get the fuck out of here. And that's the same thing with the crown. I think their ego is too big. Like, that, oh, the whole world, this worldwide premiere event. Is Oprah's interviewing you. It's like, come the fuck on, people. We have so much more shit. People are dying left and right. And that's not that's worried true. about watching no a doubt goddamn about that. show about the crown that's not even American, bro. What the fuck out yeah. of that shit. Let them go live their lives, man. I'm all for that. Yeah, they're li- aren't they in stuff. California? They they're the in California, crown, right? Bro, cool. Yeah. I'm glad they left the crown because they're like, fuck this shit. We don't need all this bullshit. <laughs> we don't need racism from staff in the royal gardens or wherever they were talking about. It's like, that's wrong. Yeah, Megan, stand up yourself. Cool, great support it all for that mm-hmm. but don't yeah. make it a spectacle bro a spectacle, then that's when i yeah. lose respect for you it's like oh woe is me I hate a, yeah. I hate a, a, a woe is me type of person and trying to exploit the crown it's like why don't you just keep it in a family affair as all families should when you bring in other people it creates unnecessary, unnecessary drama and it breaks ties i don't think they'll ever talk mm-hmm. again probably they're not gonna reach this know. relationship bro who knows who cares bro but i know <laughs> i know i'm a fucking maybe i'm a cynic for this whatever i don't think you're cynical i don't think you're cynical i think you're explaining it in a way that i think a lot of people would agree with i think the what i would say is that yeah what i would no i agree with you i think first of all oprah one of the greatest like one of the she's goaded i mean one of the greatest interviewees of all interview interviewers of all time Harry king i mean she's she's definitely an idol of mine because of her style she asks amazing questions she knows how to really emotionally attach herself with with the discussion that's going on yes. be an active listener to the degree where she's asking questions as and other individuals talking and knowing like in the case of Meghan markle like when she's trying to hide what she's trying to hide what she's trying to hold back i respect the hell out of that number one number two i think you make some good points in regards to firstly as americans why should we care about that right and I don't want to be in the business of defending the monarchy because, well, I'm an American for two reasons. Honestly, number one, I'm an American as an American because, well, we let's just say we revolted against the monarchy and yeah. we shouldn't be supporting it. Number two, yeah. number two is an Indian. I know exactly what the, what the monarchy man. did 
to my ancestors. Yeah. And yeah. so I have a lot of anger and disdain towards that. And so I'm not here to defend anything that has to do with the monarchy in, in just the more traditional sense. I understand, however, um, the UK's, you know, uh, the people of United Kingdom, their admiration for the, for the monarchy at large. And I actually have a, a lot of respect for the Queen. Because I think the Queen's like a, a very interesting figure. I think she's been a figure that's gone through so many things. And she has been there for so many different moments. So I have a, a lot of just inherent respect for her just as a human being, yeah. I think. Because I think yeah, she is a decent sure. person. Sure. But I think as you were talking about, like, you think of what's really going on. Number one, if we're going to talk about the Royals, the bigger situation is you've got the whole situation with, that happened with Prince Andrew. Remember with Prince Andrew and the whole pedophilia thing like that? <laughs> that doesn't get talked about anymore because the family, you know, like they, they uh, protected him. Yeah. yeah, they protected him. So on that issue, it's we're talking about the three things that came, I got from the interview. I only watched half of it where the number one thing was obviously – I think there was the discussion in regards to race, right? Like where mm -hmm. she admitted, she said that um, Harry had told her that her, that their child to be Archie, someone had asked, one of the members of the royal family had asked about uh, his uh, skin color and whether that would be of impact or of importance. And I think that's, there's no denying that that if in the context it seemed to have been put in um, yeah. is racist. However, if it was in another context where I think, I mean, I'm trying to figure out what that context would be, but let's say, for example, it was like, have you, Harry, as a white man, thought about what it will mean to have to talk to your kid who may be of a different color than you about things that you don't know about? Like, if, if, that, was a, if that was a discussion, that's a yeah. totally different context, right, about, like, the police or about how life could be, right? I think that's different, but I don't think that's what happened. I think in that case, they would have also incorporated Megan into the conversation. The second thing was obviously Megan's mental health and how she said she wanted to commit suicide. This obviously seemed to be very similar to the Diana situation. Um, yeah. And I've watched The Crown with my mother. Um, and so I have an idea of what that did to her mental health and the, the detriment sure. of that. And so you see that similarity with Megan. And then Harry talks about how that caused him for, to want to leave, that this was part of that because she realized that things could be repeating itself. And then the third thing I think was probably that she was making the, the, the case that essentially her, that her son and, then be, and both of them were going to be denied security, um, you know, going forward in their lives uh, because at least I think she was mentioning because either Archie could be black or, or I mean, he would be black, but because of Archie's yeah. skin color or because of them and, and, and their situation in the monarchy. And so I think those are the three main things that came up out of, but it always hits me. I think that last point on in regards to that makes a lot of sense. Like if you think about how the royal family protected Prince Andrew when mm -hmm. he was getting all this, you know, heat rightfully so for what he did that was so terrible. And at the same time, they're getting crucified by the British press after the <laughs> wedding, right? The wedding was beautiful. It was an amazing spectacle. Everyone was loving it. And then after the wedding, shit went downhill, right? Yeah, and sure. they didn't get that protection. I can see how that would be super upsetting. Like your son has literally been accused of pedophilia, yet he's getting all this love. Yet we're over here and we've what? Just not been professional enough. We're not, you know, conservative enough. A lot of it may have been political and that they were making, you know, they were doing a lot of political causes. And then real quickly here to wrap it up, because I know I'm kind of going on a bend. Harry, oh, fair, bro. Mm -hmm. if you think of Harry though, and how he's been treated in all this as well. And, and, yeah. and with Meghan Markle, it needs to be taken incredibly seriously. She's been through a lot, it, it seems like. And I think there's areas where I think that her story, when she talks about it, you can tell it's just, there's part of it, it's like, we want to make this a spectacle. And, and to that degree, I don't necessarily agree with it. But there's a lot of things I think she's saying that, that are truths. But Harry, I mean, this is a, this is a, they loved Prince Harry and Prince William. These are two of the kids that grew up. It was almost like Britain's kids. Like they loved them. Yeah. And he went to, he did two tours in Afghanistan, two tours in Afghanistan when most of the, the public didn't go and do any tours in Afghanistan or Iraq. Exactly. And he did that, even though he was protected to a degree, he still could have died because yeah, if there was an explosion that. at a military base, what are you going to do? Right. You're, who's the Royal? Like no one's going to care. So he put himself in harm's way for, to defend his country. Yet when he's asked 
to get that defense, to have that defense for him and his family, that security, because he knows he's going to be a target. He's still part of the royal family. Imagine if one of them were kidnapped, what that would do in regards for to sure. a, a hostage situation. I mean, there are real serious implications of this for the for the crown to then say, no, hire your own private security force because you're no longer on the payroll. I think that's a little ridiculous. But this really comes back down to the antiquated system of the monarchy and, and the institution. And I don't want to come out as defending it. I think freedom's the best way forward. But I, I think that at the same time, you know, there is that cultural aspect, like the crown, the that the aura of it, the culture of it, that is fascinating to a lot of people. And it is fascinating to me in more of like a fictional sense almost, which is why yeah. I like the crown more than the actual crown. <laughs> so, I feel you. I feel yeah. you, man. But those are my yeah. thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, and that's a good point. And just one last little little thing I wanted to mention is that you talked about the colonialistic nature of the crown, you know, occupying India and a lot of yes. different countries around the world. And one in particular that really popped up in my mind was, uh, oh my God, Hong Kong, sorry, Hong Kong. Uh, Hong yeah. Kong. And, you know, we had, that you saw the revolt that was yeah. happening last year and trying to reclaim their independence and, be separated from the mainland China. Yeah. And basically now Hong Kong is not even a thing anymore. It ceases to it's exist. It's not talked it's about China now. Yep. No, it's literally like they have no power anymore. China is yep. fully taken it back. Like it's They've not completely a, taken it's over. Not a, it's not a country anymore. It's not its own state. It's not independent anymore. It's China. Mm -hmm. It's just an island now. It's crazy. And they're even trying to rename it back to what it was traditionally. And that's messed up. I know people from Hong Kong. We both know people from Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And they were the more progressive, uh, technologically advanced, um, mm -hmm. more with the modern times. The people all yeah. spoke English because it was a British colony. And I, the root of this problem stems back to colonialization and the British mm -hmm. saying, oh, yeah, we're just going to dip out and then leave it kind of unstable. And it's like, oh, well, now China yeah, that's another thing too. to take it back. So they left all these places unstable and they left it in such a rushed uh rush time that they didn't have any shot of really claiming their independence or being a stabilized yeah, it wasn't real independence it wasn't real nah, independence that's why you see yeah. all these problems in all these countries that britain occupied that france occupied the portugal occupied mm -hmm. spain occupied and all these colonialistic european countries that seized conquered and ruled over these different places for natural resources yeah. for exploiting the people slave trade there was so much that went down that mm -hmm. shaped our modern society shaped a lot of issues that are still prevalent today and that doesn't get talked about enough and especially with hong kong it's like insane bro but yeah man you know let's uh it's crazy they, it's weird crowd. how it just kind of it like got it's just like it's weird how it was really well talked about and then obviously the whole nba situation because they're the nba makes so much money in china like they had their whole situation with that Sellouts, i think it was man. that was so yeah bad. no that's Darryl a real Murray. that's a real sellout that's what that is bro. exactly you Murray. showed your true colors right like the fact that you were okay profitability for you meant more than the human rights violations yeah, that was, in Uyghur, that the, was the, the, the problems of China's control. Foul, and we had, I think we had that earlier discussion, right? Uh, a while back. I don't know if it was on one of these, but uh, we were talking about how big of a threat China is. And that really gets into that. It's an economic threat. They're taking over a lot of areas in Asia. Like they're, this is a Stealing real problem. Stealing everybody's tech. Tech. Tech's a big Stealing, one. I mean, that's copying, the main thing, right? Replicating. Yep. And it's, oh, it's a divide and conquer type situation. And I actually want to correct myself for something I said earlier, not correct myself, but when I was saying in regards to kind of what's happening with like business, like here in North, I understand like obviously the supermarkets and grocery stores are going to be essential businesses, right? Yeah. Because people need to get food. The point is, is that people, it divides people. It'll divide people yeah, because people sure. will start saying, well, what makes mine not essential? What makes that essential? And I think what happens is, is that, that causes more confusion and it does the opposite Definitely. of what we want, right? Which is like bring people to an area of understanding where they're getting like, this is how we want our society to progress. And it only leads us backwards, right? Where we divide. Yeah. And I think that that's the biggest problem is a lot of the times we talk about how foreign entities have, have kind of have done things that have made, uh, have, 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 
affected American democracy, but it's really America doing it to itself in many ways. And we do it a lot around the world. I mean, we yeah. talked about that. And I think we that's where the real discussion comes in about like, how do we pave a way forward? Um, I think that there's gonna be a lot of lessons learned from this pandemic and a lot of lessons learned on a global stage, how we interact and engage with different nations and everything. For sure, man, getting that for sure. <laughs> but, uh, let's get in the fit of the week real brief, bro. Let's hit this. So since we had a musical guest on today, it's only right to get some music fits from as far as 2000. NYU 2016 commencement speaker. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> we didn't. We still haven't had real real commencement of class of COVID, but you know, COVID. Who, who knows what what happens in the future. But clearly, you all know Pharrell minus the top hat. Shit, he sells a hat on, but. Oh, we get towels yeah. in the background too. Is that Midtown Town? Yeah, it has to be Midtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Midtown Town. You got the little Louis scarf. The uh, I don't even know what that hat is. R maybe Rockets, like an alternate rock. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, and then he has a dog. I have no on idea his what pants, that is. Just kind of, kind of cool. But it looks comfy. It looks very New Yorky. And this is obviously clearly early two thousands, as you could tell by the baggy daddy pants. I think he took your scarf. <laughs> he did that looks yeah. very similar to that one scarf i do have you're absolutely correct yeah. about that um pharrell and he got my main man uh Lil uzi vert right here on the right with some strawberries strawberry fields uh is, i believe that's the Ghanaian flag that's on the Ghana. Right. That's Ghana yeah. yeah 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 yeah, it's fit is cool fit. I'll, I'll, you remember when they played each other nice in the World Cup, jacket. bro? Yeah, they did play each other in the World twice. Cup. Twice. Right? They played each other twice in back-to-back -back -back years. That's crazy. That is nuts. Hopefully, U.S. Oh. could figure it out next time around. I hope they figure it out next time. Yeah. Four or two? Is it next year? No, next no, year? no. It was it two. Next 22. 22. It's 22. Next 22. year, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, Pulisic, you got We'll Raina. see what happens. They got some solid pieces this time around they do sure they could they have a younger where, team they have a younger yeah, team they got talent win, they can't complain they'll be, they'll be definitely competitive which no cool. shot bro but if they if they ruin Pulisic again and not and don't qualify that guys should just get out get out go to they, germany no, go to germany will. go to they germany to. because germany isn't goaded like they were before they're not goaded anymore nah, like they're france still considered England, one of the England's best but be they're really not good france sure. yeah england's gonna be really good this year france and france too is gonna be yeah yeah for uh i mean Portugal, Ronaldo, they're kind of, they have a good team, they have a good lineup for sure, mm -hmm. just a little old, Argentina yeah. does never does well, Messi also doesn't play that great in the World Cup, um, Belgium's going to be beast, Belgium's I think, I think this, this next, I think Belgium, France, England are going to be three of the final four for sure, yeah, I think I would, for sure, I, I don't know who the other one's going to be, but, it's a toss yeah. up for sure. But uh, on the left, Playboy Cardi. I'm not really a fan of Playboy's music. Actually, I'm not a really big fan of Uzi's music. So this is another thing. Like, these two are clearly super popular amongst a lot of people, especially in our age group. Uh, Uzi just kind of, his voice annoys me a little bit, as well as his corny beats. Um, I think his beats are just kind of corny, in my opinion. But, you know, he can mm -hmm. rap, he can spit. I like a lot of songs that he's featured on. And some songs that he has on his albums that aren't, again, the mainstream shit that I like and enjoy because it's more real, it's more in-depth about who he is as a person, what he really values and talks about. I think that's dope. I also fuck with the fact that he likes anime and a lot of street culture, which is cool. Playboy Cardi, yeah. I liked his original content that he came out with when he first came up on the scene. And his last recent album, Whole Lot of Red, which is highly anticipated, was a piece of shit album. It's horrible. It's not good at all. He also sang and sounded like a baby. Which is like, mm -hmm. what's up with this baby voice, dude? How, like, how do yeah. people not find that annoying? I don't understand it. Yeah, we give me shit. Yeah, we open the mic. Yeah, I'm playing this shit. Hold on, man. I'm on your man. Yeah, I'm on That's literally how he sounds, bro. I could do that. I just did it. I so easy. <laughs> give me a good producer. Give me a good engineer. Give me a good team. Make me famous. Call me Playboy P. You know, literally. <laughs> yeah, I'm Playboy P. Spin out, seven on the B. Yeah, I'm a money maker team. Yeah, I'm a red with a B. Yeah, that's literally what it sounds like, dude. I don't even need out of the team, bro. Fuck, get out of me. <laughs> anyway, I'm a hater. But moving on. <laughs> um, 
That was actually at Coachella 2016. I was there. That was a good. That was when he was cool. That's when I liked his music. It was a good performance. Mm. But uh, moving on. Hold on. You got uh, Lo Yachty and Yachty. A$AP Rocky on Flacco. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty boy. I love Yachty's album. Yachty's fit it's is like cool. So that red cool, is dope. With the that is so too. cool. Yeah. We used to call these braids beady beads. <laughs> like, hey, beady beads, go with the people and shit. That was also a middle school meal. Will. will started that. He's like, bro, you got some beady bead ass head. But yeah, it was so funny. Um, yeah, bro, this, these are two dope fits. I love the loafers. Rocky's rocking. The Gucci. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Gucci the Yanks. Yankees. Yeah, Gucci Yankees. Gucci Yanks. Loafers, which I've never seen in my entire life until now. Super cool. Got the Gucci hoodie. That's the fit I like because the Gucci hoodie and the blazer over the hoodie is so cool. And mm. I, I like rocking it. I, I, I remember one day skipping. It's a look. It. It's a look for sure. It's a look. It was looking. This is clean, comfy, cozy, but also like okay, bet kind of mm-hmm. upper upper echelon of class. Definitely dope. And then to wrap it up, got Weezy F, Louisiana, Nolan's very own, Lil Wayne. Uh, my favorite rapper, well, not my favorite, top favorite rapper, top five favorite rapper for sure. And this uh-huh. is clearly early 2000s. He went with the cholo look here, high socks, lean back, grab the balls. Yeah, the Converse. Rocking it, man. Converse, literally, mm-hmm. and the 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 flannel. I miss those Converse, bro. I mean, those I love those Chucks. Person, man. Yeah, bro. Chucks, Chucks are bro. always gonna be because in. they're like Van. I mean, they're I always. Know, yeah, I don't rock Vans personally, but like yeah. Chucks are in vans are here to stay forever. Yeah, I got this. Nike, I got Air the Force superstar Ones, conference. Superstar. I got the yeah. yeah. Exactly. What's it Those called? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Stan Smith. And I have the Stan Smith, obviously. Yeah, yeah. The the Ditos, but yeah, I mean these are like I because I remember these like vividly, like the denim, like high top, like that's that's a that's like the typical like two thousands kind of like footwear. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Bro. Mm-hmm. But yeah, bro. Um, sheesh, another Thursday gone. Moving on. This is our gonna be our eleventh episode, I believe. Yeah, right. We, we've 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 gotten. I think it's eleven. I think we've gotten the chance of like really speaking to a lot of interesting people, um, and yeah. you know, a lot of them similar. You know, a lot of our friends that we've talked about this are kind of either musicians or in the or social media kind of like uh have social media followings um kind of social media marketers stuff like that uh and your friends in particular and i think it's been good to kind of see the differences and the similarities because i think there's a lot of them um and just kind of artistically what we wanted to show i think with this first kind of like 10 episodes or so is really like getting into like as this year has come upon us as the last year has yeah. hit us trying to connect us together in a better way and really bring people together and understanding you know, our generation, understanding the challenges that we face. And I hope that we, per, you know, are present our audience with a little bit of that. 100% can agree more, dude. And another last note I wanted to say is, I mean, I'm sure people notice we haven't had a, a woman on this show yet. Yeah. So that's, uh, get that lined up for everybody soon. Don't worry about it. We're not sexist mm-hmm. over here. ELE, baby, mm-hmm. everybody love everybody. And no one, appreciates women more than us I, I would definitely have to say that got so, the greatest I think we got the two greatest moms ever so two greatest moms bro about the mothers 100 percent. you know there's happy that. international that, that? women's day was uh this yeah, past yeah, this yeah. week shout out to that man that's awesome that should be every day though we should celebrate that every day should i be. totally agree I totally you don't agree. Have, you don't see us having international men's day because it's not necessary bro celebrate women i feel day. like that was something I, I someone had talked about how when you when you put it into recognition i think it's good to have a recognition for like if you're in a business or something like that because that could be a different setting and there's a lot of things that go into it but i think i totally agree like when it comes to like universal holidays and stuff it's certain days like mlk like that should stay but i think when you've because i think it's great i think it's good to have that because it reminds people but i think a lot of it is like how do we integrate these aspects into society that to make it to make it so that it's not like we're just hyper focused on this at one particular mm-hmm. time and then we go back black to brunch, history month. you know what i mean exactly yeah. they all black and, history and, months so, over now we don't have to care it, it's, like, it's no, so wild that's right that's so, just the time that i guess they could educate teach exactly. and put a focus on it and 
I don't think it's necessary because it's, it's not taught year in round schools. again. That's it's why. Not school, but also take <laughs> exactly. advantage of the other time you have to express thoughts, emotions, feelings, and learn get that things. info out there. And people should really learn listen to it, exactly. take it in, and learn new things. Absolutely, that's what life's about: exposing yourself to new things, new experiences, and, most importantly, and being open-minded. We want people. Yeah, we want people to to educate themselves and then try to educate others. And not this is where the line gets tough: is when you are educated, don't act like others ought to be. Don't act like others need the others if they're not are bad inherently. Educate them yourself. Do it in a proper way. And if you communicate it, I think you're. I think we're finding and we found that when speak if you speak with a certain level of. Uh, respect and you listen with that same amount of respect there's a lot of love to go around and i think that that's what we've done towards the first kind of a uh, dozen on this show uh dozen yeah. shows that we've done is just kind of like sh- spread that love spread that positivity um in any way shape or form that we you know we can 100 percent, bro i think that's a great note to end on man i couldn't agree more with you but shout out to willie gates thank you my brother for coming on mm-hmm. good to see you uh as always, good to see you, T. Um, have fun again, as always, as usual. Everybody, yeah. uh, like, subscribe, share, comment. Get involved with us, man. You can email us some Get questions. Involved. If you want to come on the yep. show, whatever. Whatever, we're open to hearing anything you want to talk about. So we're all about that, passing that experience, passing that love and support. So you support us, we'll support you, basically, is the bottom line. And everyone, have mm-hmm. a good day. Have a good weekend. Um, Happy Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. As usual, you know, stay tuned to next Saturday at noon. They always drop new episodes. They always drop. We always drop. Um, <laughs> but yeah, peace, love, everybody. And prosper. Peace, no. love, and prosper.